After years of demands and complaints about the NVIDIA control panel, NVIDIA GeForce Experience, and the recording tool formerly known as Shadowplay, NVIDIA dropped a new control program out of nowhere. NVIDIA App. This was a bit of a stealth release. It seems no one was given the usual heads up or early access or anything that this was happening. They just dropped the beta this past week, and it's pretty neat. This app further iterates on the modern design that GeForce Experience already had, but it feels like a blend of Blizzard's Battle.net launcher and AMD's Relive program. Here you can find everything from optimizations for your game settings, installers for NVIDIA's other tools like NVIDIA Broadcast, GeForce Now, and Omniverse, to driver updates and enabling the Shadowplay overlay. Most of this feels pretty slick and smooth. This serves as a complete replacement for GeForce Experience. It actually requires you uninstall it to install the new app, but only a partial replacement for the NVIDIA control panel, which remains installed. This is a somewhat confusing choice given the NVIDIA control panel basically hasn't changed its UX or its UI since like the Windows XP days and is far less responsive of a program than GeForce Experience was, being a much newer program. Regardless, some of the frequently used settings from the control panel are present in the new app, such as managing global and per program controls for DSR upscaling, downscaling, lower render resolution upscaling, frame rate limiting, low latency mode, G-Sync, power management, and so on. This also brings toggles for the new RTX Dynamic Vibrance, an AI-trained color adjustment for games that, based on my experience in Halo Infinite, actually seems kind of nice if you like lots of color. Arguments could be made to, you know, stick to leaving it off, to stick to the original artist's intentions, but, you know. We also have a toggle for the new RTX HDR feature, another AI-trained option that tone maps SDR content to HDR. This was originally introduced as an RTX video enhancement, specifically for playing back video in your browsers or streams, uh, but Digital Foundry just showed off that it can work on games too now. Uh, this replaces the Windows 11 Auto HDR feature. Currently, it requires you to only have one monitor connected to work but I've been assured that an upcoming Game Ready Driver update will remove this requirement. We are still missing a lot of controls from the NVIDIA control panel. Those aforementioned RTX video enhancements, any sort of display management or control, and so on. But it's a start. Let's hope we don't get stuck having to use both for as long as we've had to use the modern and classic controls in Windows, which has been necessary since Windows 8. The capture overlay's got an overhaul too. It feels a lot more snappy and slick looking and unlocked 120 FPS video capture for both manual recordings and replay highlights. 120 FPS highlights are glorious.
This is awesome, but we're not given any codec choice here. So those hoping to take advantage of the HEVC encoding on any invent capable GPU at this point, or AV1 encoding on, the, on their RTX 4000 GPUs, will still be disappointed. A second audio track for your microphone recording is supported like before, but there's still no option to manually choose an audio device for your system sound, only the microphone. You also get a new option to limit how much disk space Shadowplay can use in general, which is pretty neat. All in all, we're seeing a nice improvement here, but there's definitely some features and porting left to be desired. To see how this compares to AMD's offering, click this video here and chat with us on the forums about this, and remember to be kind. Rewind.